Did you know that somebody is actually stealing one of Nintendo's games right now to advertise their own games? And the director of the game that worked at Nintendo for 32 years is absolutely irate. Oh boy, we have that story and many others coming to you today from the Prime 5, where we try to get five stories, rapid fire the biggest and best five stories of the last 24 hours out to you guys from Nintendo within a reasonable eight minutes once we get into the actual stories. I want to thank you so much for being here, and I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get into the news. You are watching Nintendo Prime, and at this channel on Monday through Friday, we drop five videos going over the five latest stories in the last 24 hours revolving around Nintendo, the biggest of those stories. We also, on the weekends, end up dropping other types of content, including unboxings and Prime Answers episode that goes out every single Saturday where we answer all of your questions questions. If you enjoy Nintendo news and you want to get the latest updates, all you need to do is subscribe to Nintendo Prime. And our first story deals with last week's sales from the Famitsu sales charts because man, Switch was really, really performing big time. So the first part we're going to go over are the top 10 in software sales. And at the top, we have Nintendo Switch Sports at 53,900 units, followed up at number two by Xenoblade Chronicles 3 at 39,529 units. That does put Xenoblade Chronicles 3 just past 150,000 units in Japan. We have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at number three at, with 29,276 units. Kirby in the Forgotten Land at 27,957 units. That's at number four. At number five, we have Monster Hunter Rise plus Sunbreak set. So that is the combo pack for Nintendo Switch at 24,180 units. At number six, we have the Nintendo Switch version of Minecraft at 21,173 units. At number seven, we have Live Alive from Square Enix for Nintendo Switch at 20,999 units. At number eight, we have Ring Fit Adventure at 19,012 units. At number nine, we have the only PlayStation 5 game in the top 10 at Gran Turismo 7 at 17,153. Then at number 10, we have Momotaro Dentetsu Shawa Haisi Rawa Wo Mai Tai Ban. Yeah, I'm really bad at pronouncing that one. 12,780 units. Now, things actually get really, really crazy with the hardware sales because despite there not being a massively new Switch game coming out last week, Nintendo Switch itself moved 150,000 units in Japan just last week. So the Nintendo Switch OLED model is number one at 94,827 units last week. PlayStation 5 is number two at 44,126. This would be the disc version. Number three is the base model Switch at 35,071 units. Number four is the Switch Lite at 23,924 units. At number five, we have the Xbox Series X at 4,802 units. At number six, we have the Xbox Series S at 3,901 units. At number seven, we have the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition at 2,474. The new 2DS LL is chiming in at number eight, despite it no longer being in production at 307 units. And number nine, we have PlayStation 4 at 28 units. That's right. They go down even to double or single digits when they're talking about sales figures. Of course, when it comes to sales, sometimes I think, man, should I sell my soul to get Breath of the Wild 2 today? Let's get into our next story. Nintendo has been doing a lot of really, really cool things with their recent games. We saw with Nintendo Switch Sports, they were using a newer technology to help with the resolution, upscaling, and maybe even the frame rates. And now we have Splatoon 3 coming out, and we keep wondering, what the hell is going on? Well, we now have some information coming from Oatmeal Dome, who did a massive data mine of Splatoon 3. And why could he do that? Well, because Splatoon 3 demo is available to download right now. Can't use it till the 27th, but you can install it. So let's get into what Oatmeal Dome discovered. So first up, Splatoon 3 is using a new server infrastructure known as the NPLN. This is the new server in infrastructure that actually made its debut on Switch with Monster Hunter Rise. Now, Splatoon 2 used the old system known as Nex, which has had a lot of criticism at it. He also notes that a lot of the lobby features alone in Splatoon 3 would actually be near impossible to run on Next the way it was set up. He also notes Splatoon 3 will likely still use peer-to-peer -peer connections. It's not technically confirmed, 
but still MPLN and better netcode can actually make this a much better experience than we got with Splatoon 2 and a lot of the constant disconnects. Also, he found in the files that Splatoon 3 is using AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1.0, which again, this is what the aforementioned Switch Sports uses for its upscaling. That means it's not using the temporal upscaling of 2.0 that will take prior frames to guess at filling in missing pixels when upscaling, but 1.0 uses the current frame instead, which is known as spatial upscaling. 2.0's way is actually a better way of going about it, but 1.0, as we saw in Switch Sports, is still better than not doing anything at all. Splatoon 3 does look pretty crisp compared to Splatoon 2, and a lot of that is going to be from using this new technology. Naturally, this is really cool to have new tech applied to future Nintendo games, obviously keeping Nintendo Switch relevant for even longer. And you know what? I need to go squirt some ink into the next story. So we already talked about sales from Famitsu, but now we have a sales update from the NPD itself because, hey, they released their report at the same time, and that is for July. So let's get into sales in the United States for the month of July of 2022. So Switch was the best-selling system in terms of units sold, while PlayStation 5 led in dollar sales, which has been sort of the way it's been going all year long. Seven of the top 20 software sales were actually published by Nintendo. So these are the top 20 in sales for July. Xenoblade Chronicles and 3 debuted at number four. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was at number seven. Kirby and the Forgotten Land was at number 11. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was at number 12. 12. Animal Crossing New Horizons is at number 13. Pokemon Legends Arceus is at number 15. Nintendo Switch Sports is at number 16. And notably, Monster Hunter Rise, that is console exclusive on Switch, but also on PC, was at number 20. Now, what we have to remember, of course, is that none of these sales include digital sales. It's just physical. While most of the other games are competing against, have both. Now, to get even deeper into this, we're going to look at the top 10 for Switch, and you're seeing Xenoblade Chronicles 3 at number 1, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at number 2, Kirby and the Forgotten Land at number 3, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 4, Animal Crossing New Horizons at 5, Pokemon Legends Arceus at 6, Nintendo Switch Sports at 7, Live Alive debuts at number 8, Digimon Survive debuts at number 9, and Mario Party Superstars comes in at number 10. So getting into our next story here, this is one that just sucks. A Nintendo game is having assets stolen from it to advertise a completely different game, and the director of that game is pretty upset about it. What are we even talking about? Well, the game in question that was stolen was Steel Diver. What? Steel Diver of all games? So, former Nintendo employee and game creator Takayaya Inamaru has called out a Twitter mobile game. From the image that Inamaru posted, it looks to be an ad for the mobile game Battle Warship State War.io, running within another mobile game. Battle Warship State War.io is a game where players command battleships and aircraft carriers in a naval strategy battle. Players expand their base, organize their fleet, and sink enemy ships and pirates. The game is operated by Special Games slash Magic Prime Group Limited, a company that appears to be based in China. And their other releases include titles such as the casual puzzle game Kitten Match. Battle Warship State War.io also includes submarines, and the scene Imanmura pointed out as being used without permission is likely an ad to showcase that. While Steel Diver, Sub Wars, and Battle Warship State of War.io both share the theme of naval battles, as described above, the gameplay of each game is completely different. It does look like Steel Diver Sub Wars is being used as marketing material without permission for a game in a completely different gameplay genre. Notably, the game doesn't play anything like Steel Diver, but the app is using Steel Diver footage as an advertisement for their game. While Imanomura no longer works at Nintendo, he was employed there for 32 years and is such an industry veteran that he is well-respected and has his name in the credits of many titles. He was the director of Steel Diver, by the way, adding more fuel to the flames. Can't blame him for being upset that someone is using his work to advertise an entirely different game. But let's dive into our next story. This final story we have for you today is actually a really cool one because it deals with our neighbors to the north. And no, I'm not talking about Santa Claus, although he can come and visit me anytime. I will gladly sit on his lap. No. What I'm really waiting for is the sales of video games for Canada. 
Oh, Canada. I don't even know if that's how it goes, to be honest. I'm not Canadian. That being said, let's get into these big game sales, which include games like Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild. So what are we talking about here? It's a $25 off physical sale for copies of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Mario Golf Super Rush, Super Mario Party, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, and Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Now, the funny thing about this is the sales are all over the place. It's almost every major retailer, but some of them are doing it at, at different dates. Most major retailers in Canada started the sale either yesterday or today. Some are waiting until late next week. Most of them run until the end of the month. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to see the exact dates at your various retailers. That being said, I do want to thank all of you guys for tuning in for this edition of the Prime 5. I will be back at it again on Monday, giving you the top five news from over the weekend. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys, well, if not tomorrow, on Monday.